Normal would be being able to have a grilled cheese sandwich. To go to camp, to play in the playground. To eat what her seven-year-old sister eats. Letting him experience life and, and enjoy something without being terrified that he's going to die. Normal would be to not have to be different than the other kids. That would be her dream, is to be able to just be like every other kid. Maya Konoff is passionate about gymnastics and spends four nights a week fine-tuning her routines. But for this 10-year-old, life has been a balancing act since she was just a baby. You have to bring your own food to parties, and I can never buy lunch at school. Sometimes, like, my friends will have foods that aren't safe for me, and I'll, like, and they look, kind of, like, really good, so I'll get, like, a little sad and I wish that I didn't have food allergies. First time my daughter had an allergic reaction, she was nine months old. And uh, she had a spoonful of yogurt and immediately blew up like a tomato. We had no idea what was going on. And the next reaction was my sister gave her some, what she called veggie cheese. She started swelling and just scratching and she was scratching herself bloody. And I ran into the drugstore. We finally found one. I had left her with my sister and brother-in-law in the car. And um, when I came back, they said, no, it's OK. She fell asleep. <sighs> and I realized instantly she wasn't sleeping. She had lost consciousness. Maya is just one of millions diagnosed with life-threatening food allergies, what some call the best kept secret in public health. But there is hope. Thanks to FAI, Maya, along with others, is one of the early participants in clinical trials at Mount Sinai Hospital. Dr. Hugh Sampson is one of the world's leading specialists in pediatrics, allergy, and immunology. I think we are at a point where we're finally being able to actively treat people as opposed to just passively saying you can't eat something. We actually have little certificates that labels them as heroes because they really are. I mean, they're, they're putting in the time commitment, they're subjecting themselves to some degree of risk in order to find out if this therapy is really effective. I can tell you, I would not do a study that I would not put my own child in. We were just so excited that she was eligible for a trial. We, we, we certainly had fear, and, and I think she actually said it best. And she said, this could be life-changing for me. In North Carolina, Kim Engel Hughes is doing what she can to change her three-year-old son Everett's life. Every two weeks, they make the six-hour round trip to Duke University Medical Center to participate in a clinical trial where, bit by bit, he is learning to tolerate peanuts. For me, it's been the best decision I made since I got that diagnosis because it has educated me so much. Being in a clinical trial opens you up to having contact with all these really, really smart people that know everything about this and more. One of those is Dr. Wesley Burks, Chief of Pediatric Allergy and Immunology at Duke University Medical Center. The recent studies that show if you treat them with small doses over time, for those that tolerate it, their threshold will go up before they have a reaction. And that in itself is like a big deal for a family. He thinks it's really cool, but he could be, you know, he's very into superheroes, and he can be the peanut superhero that he's part of. He may be part of what we may go pick up in a drugstore in 10 years that helps other kids survive. Back in New York, five-year-old Kaya Dorsey is waiting until she is eligible for a trial. For now, she is surviving by carefully navigating a world of food that is life-threatening. Peanuts, milk, fish, ham, eggs, sushi, and, and all that, and cow's milk, and cinnamon toast crunch. Parent's worst nightmare, I, I, you know, a car accident, a bus accident, someone kidnaps your kid or something like that. I mean, my worst nightmare is, is simple. It's, 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 it's a crumb. She said she didn't want to die. It was just like last week, and she was like, I don't want to die. And we're like, what are you talking about? And she was like, I don't want to die. Given what uh, FAI is trying to do, and 
I think someone has to step out. And if it could help her, then yes, I would, I would want to be a part of it. If we're ever going to find out the answers as to whether or not these work, we need to find people who are going to be able to, you know, give that extra time to help us, you know, come up with the, the cure. Patients are our most valuable resource, and, and families are, are the backbone of our organization. Today, FAI funds uh, in excess of 30 active research grants, and with the proper investment of time and resources, we will be able to bring promising therapies to the market. It is that funding and support from FAI that has enabled scientific advances that now allow Maya to enjoy one of life's simple pleasures. I wanted to do it because I thought like if I go if I do this it could change my life because I could outgrow one of my allergies and now I can have a slice of pizza if it's cooked well done. Just that alone, the fact that she can go to a birthday party and have a slice of pizza with the other kids is huge. And now just knowing that she's already at a level where she's safer, you know, I thought that's what it's all about is making our kids safer. How do you not put your kid in a study like that? Please. Please trust in someone. And this organization and these people are the someone that I think you can trust because they have the best of the best working with them and the best of the best working for you.